The YouTube channel centered around music can be found in abundance over the platform. Whether it's reaction videos to new music, or music production tutorials, or album reviews, or Melonhead himself, there's tons of music related content on YouTube. Channels like ARTV, Brad Taste in Music, Blackie Speaks, Charles Cornell, and of course, The Needle Drop. I would consider these channels, among many others, to be the best of the best in the YouTube music content creation sphere. They all have great personalities, interesting takes, and have always kept me very entertained while learning a lot about music. I want to say this again to be clear, I think all of these channels are very entertaining and I can't recommend them enough. But, and there's always a but, things got to a point where these videos just started to feel a little stale. Things like Melonhead talking about some obscure album for the millionth time or describing what the new Drake album sounds like when I've already listened to it and I don't need to hear it explained again. Not that I dislike his content, I think it's great, it's just that it started to get a little repetitive for me. A lot of music reaction videos, which I always had tons of fun with, also started to feel a little empty and pointless. Truth be told, music in general started to get a little stale for me. Me. Listening to the same music over and over and over again only works for so long and branching out into other genres takes a lot of effort and work to find good music. It can be challenging at times and this is the way I was feeling not too long ago. One day, feeling kind of defeated, I logged onto YouTube to search for something totally unrelated to music. And in my recommendations was a video for a channel I had never watched before, Hive Mind. I think the video was ranking different album covers, which while simple enough was a little different than what I would normally watch on YouTube. And I enjoyed the video, not by a huge margin, but I thought it was different and interesting. I started looking through all of the videos on their channel and was surprised by all of the fun, interesting video ideas they had. Guessing the song from the sample, artist song brackets, worst tweets of all time tier list, hive mind feud and hive mind jeopardy, the list goes on and on. It was just so different from everything I had watched on YouTube up to that point, so I started to dig in and just started watching all these videos. First thing I noticed was that the videos weren't your regular 10 minute long videos that you could, you know, sit down and devote total attention to. I would put it on in the background while like eating or studying, and I found out really quickly how entertaining and refreshing this channel was. I don't want to make it seem like they invented the game of Jeopardy or anything like that, but I had never seen anyone use this type of format to talk about music. I just found it to be very innovative and really different from all the music discussion and music theory videos I would watch beforehand. But there was something more to this channel than just plugging pop music into game shows and tier lists. I mean, that's fun and all, but again, it's not like super revolutionary. There was something more to it than just that. And that's when I realized that this is not a music channel. At the core of most Hive Mind videos are not the game shows or the music topics. It's actually those two guys sitting in front of the camera, Graydon and Riley. Maybe even more specifically though, it's the dialogue between the two of them. Hive Mind is kind of like a comedy show or some sort of stand-up routine, except nothing scripted. All of the dialogue is totally organic and all of the jokes that are made are pretty much off the cuff. You can tell right off the bat that the chemistry between Graydon and Riley is off the charts. They don't ever seem uncomfortable with each other, and they look totally at ease with joking around in front of the camera without putting up any sort of front. From what I've heard in interviews is that the two of them act on camera exactly how they act off camera. And this is kind of the key to this duo's success on YouTube, in my opinion. I'm sure everyone watching has at least one friend, one very close friend that they feel comfortable talking to and they don't feel any need to put up a mask. I have two or three close friends and it's only when I'm around them that the jokes come out. Saying crazy things that you normally wouldn't say in front of acquaintances or, you know, more distant friends because you know that your close friends won't judge you for anything that you do or say. But as soon as someone outside of those two or three friends enters the scenario, you clam up and act more normal. This is Riley and Graydon, but instead of, you know, clamming all up and acting all stiff, they stay the exact same way. They're comfortable around the camera. They don't act like hundreds of thousands of people are watching and listening to everything that they do and say. Instead of me talking so much about this, let's just run some examples. Get out of the shower, private! That's not how you drain! You need to sweat! <laughs> 
and sleep in the sweat and stink up every room you walk into if you're gonna want to drain in my platoon. Fans up, uniting us all. And now Grant is going to be George W. Bush, and he's going to throw out the first pitch at the Yankees next home game in New York. The place is going to go ballistic. I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Do you want to see my impression of Ash Ketchum from the Pokemon movie? Oh, I'd love to. So I'm funny to you? <laughs> funny how? Like, like a clown? <laughs> oh, give me a second, I'm a little... There you go. <laughs> nice. yeah, that's good. Now watch how much this hurts. Say ow. It what? hurts. It doesn't hurt. Say ow. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> Say ow. It hurt me other ways. <laughs> you broke my arm and yeah. I feel fine. But, you know, yeah. you get Botox again? No, I didn't. <laughs> um, I did brush my teeth with horseradish, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's stinging like, my yeah, sinuses. I was going to say. Arctic aquatic mammals produce the best lard. That's fine. I think that pretty much spoke for itself. There's no facade, there's no discomfort. It's just fun. Like a relaxed, enjoyable afternoon with some close friends just joking around and making pop culture references. At first, when watching these two guys go at it with their one-liners and little quips, you might get a little impatient. Because after all, you're there for the tier list or the bracket, not for the jokes that weren't advertised in the thumbnail and title. But after watching a video or two of these guys, you'll start to feel more at ease and you'll begin to even enjoy watching these two guys joking around with each other. I'll admit that a lot of their jokes aren't all that funny, but they land them with such confidence that it's hard not to enjoy watching. Pair that with DJ Grant's insane laughter and you won't be able to help but smile throughout the whole video. Because after all, a lot of the time that we spend with friends is just making dumb jokes that only you would laugh at. And this is where it comes back to music. I I think the music industry at this point is kind of at an all-time low, much like the movie industry where everything just feels recycled. Pop songs all kind of sound the same, the biggest artists nowadays were the biggest artists years ago, and everything just feels so bland. This is reflected in YouTube music content as well, as mentioned before, where you'll be sitting there watching Melonhead talk about the newest Taylor Swift album, and you'll be left just thinking to yourself, what happened to all this music? Where's the fun in it anymore? Where's the originality, the genius? Well, it's out there, but it's definitely not in the mainstream, that's for sure. To find music that has a more refreshing creative sound, you'll have to do some digging through different genres and smaller artists. But we're going a little off topic, so let's circle back to Hive Mind. At the end of the day, music can get pretty stale if you're listening to the same stuff over and over again and you're watching the same videos about the same music over and over again. Hivemind takes what's fun and creative about music and puts it through the game show setting to make it seem all new and shiny and then allow their own personalities to take over the video. It feels like listening to music with some old friends, some close friends which I found to be much more enjoyable than listening to music by myself. 